consistent brush size if you guys are using Photoshop or you can set up Sketchbook Pro or you know this, uh, right now I'm using something called TV Paint and see that if I'm using this gray then I'll start in the white and then I'll I'll paint downwards I'll paint I'll, I'll start at the white and I'll paint away and the same thing here with this darker shade if I'm using a darker shade then I'll start in the light shade and move towards the darker shade move towards the color that you are using so if I'm using a black, then start outside of that color and move towards the black. It gives you a very, very nice blend. You know, if I want to, if I want to extend it out, if I want to extend this this gray region up, then I'll start in the light area and paint towards my the current color that I'm using. So this is how you can blend your strokes. Same thing here. Start with a gray, start up high, and always paint towards the color that you are using. See that? Paint to, paint towards, always paint towards the color that you are using, and this will give you a much, much nicer blend. Okay, um, <coughs> moving on. Um, let me see if I can, uh, let me get my tool panel up. Oops, that's the wrong one. I've got menu panel, main panel, here we go. So as long as we're dealing with silhouettes, um, you know, I could just as easily craft a person out of cutout shapes. I'm not using a brush stroke right now, but I'm just using silhouettes again. And silhouettes are what you use when you're doing the quote-unquote the, the block-in. You know, a lot of artists will talk about their block-in, and the block-in is a stage where you're trying to figure out where everything is, and you're simply using um, silhouettes to do this. Um, you're still trying to put lumps in space. You're still trying to figure out where in space everything is residing. And you're trying to make the shapes, you know, for this head. I'm just trying to make it appear as if this head is taking up the right amount of space. And put an arm down there. Uh, I'll figure out it. I'll put some chair legs down there. So, uh, oops. Where's that thing again? Uh, it's always the main panel. Okay. So you're always having to um, erase away. And actually, you know, you can use a cutout tool. You can use a, you know, your brush, brush stroke doesn't really matter there's there's no rules to what you use all you need is to be able to, uh, a way to be able to create shapes okay so anyway I've got myself a silhouette here and yeah it's time to light it so I'm gonna go in and grab a white and I'll paint towards the white that I'm using okay now this neck here, where it, where it joins to the rest of the body, it's going to cast a shadow. Anytime you have something that can catch light, you know, even this head, the, the, the head is catching some light. Whenever you catch light, you're going to cast a shadow. And as long as there's any object behind it, it's going to catch that shadow. So, if I cast light up here, it means that when I light down below, I have to you know this this part here the leg might be catching some light but at the same time you know the hand over here is going to cast a shadow so these areas will catch light other areas are going to cast catch shadow <coughs> uh, let's see 
this area here might catch some light, but the arm is going to... So that all catches light there. Then my arm is going to wind up casting a shadow. And all these areas just fall into dark detail. So, that's... This is, the, the, this is simply direct lighting. Anytime you've got... Um, let's set up another scenario. I want to... Let's do a, a dark room. Start with a dark room. Okay. So if I use white, then it means that I'm going to cut open a window, right? I'm cutting open... Let's see. What angle will I be using? Okay. No. Maybe a little more level. Okay, there. See, I've gone and I've cut a window into this dark room, and we're going to allow the light to fall in. <coughs> now, this is very different from the uh, from the little flame or light bulb because now you've got light that's coming in. You know, you've basically got yourself a rectangle of light. You've got you got a huge volumetric mass of light. And the result is if I let me just draw a little quick diagram. If I have a wall like this and uh, we you know got a little window, there's our room. Okay, so we have ourselves a little room here. That means that if I have an object here, this object is capable of being lit from here to here. Light's going to be able to reach all that. And, yeah. And what's going to happen now is also the shadow that, that is cast. The shadow is going to be a lot smaller. So there's going to be a shadow cast in the back wall, like that, like so. So, um, and when you think about which areas are going to be able to catch light, then... Yeah, light's going to be able to get everywhere up to there. From this corner to this corner, you're going to have light. So all this here is going to fall into shadow. This area is going to fall into shadow. And the rest of it is all lit up whenever you have a window. And actually, you know what? I th actually, I think this... This diagram is more interesting than what we've got going on up here. Let's slide it over. Yeah. Okay. Now, if something else, ha let's say we have ourselves a wall with a very, very thick. Yeah, we've got a very, very thick window like this, then the same thing is going to happen. You're going to have to be able to line that up and line this up. There we go. And if we have a ball, then light is only going to be able to get from here and here, oh right, some of this is going to catch there, and some of that's going to catch there. Wow, look at this crazy lighting diagram. Whew. Okay, so that means that this, this point of the ball is going to be able to see light traveling in from a certain number of directions and traveling in a certain number of directions. And this one here is going to be able to see light from here and here. So all of that, we're going to get a...
another thing like that. We're going to cast the it's going to cast its shadow onto the back wall like that. All this is going to fall into shadow. All that falls into shadow. So now the interesting thing is that at this point of the room here, this point of the room can only receive light coming from this direction and that angle. This point of the room is not able to receive light directly from outside. It can only receive light that bounces. So you'll find that as we n get closer to the edge of the room over here, this is this point is capable of receiving light. I better switch colors. From here 